Hi, I'm Ray, and I like to build things, from cups to concrete planters to cat towers and everything in between. And I believe with the right amount of guidance, anyone can build anything. And today we're going to help Carol turn her old desk into something a little more modern. Spooky. Spooky modern. We're gonna figure out what that is today. We're leaving the office. We are headed yeah. to your apartment to yeah. uh, pick up this old desk. I don't know too much about the desk also other than the fact that it looks really old. Instead of getting myself a proper desk, I got myself a tiny desk that I can't actually use as a desk, but I just couldn't resist. It was like, old and cute and kind of like creepy because it's like what happened to the child who used this desk are we about to like dive into the realm of unsolved creepy furniture mysteries yes new series new nifty series what's the biggest project you've ever had to like take on i put together my ikea dressers and my ikea bed frames i can put all those together by myself my skills are hammer nails screws drills sandpaper. <laughs> That's pretty good. Carol, this is, this is tiny. Yes. Like when you told me that you had a tiny desk I thought it was gonna be like, you know, a little, little school size kind of desk. There's not a ton of use for it right now, but it just became really close to my heart after all these years of hanging on to it and moving it from place to place with me. And it's just like kind of a nice little reminder of when I first came here. And it's also just like, has a fun little old timey spook factor to it. I found it on Craigslist for like 20 bucks off some random woman. I haven't had any hauntings with it. I was kind of hoping I would, but maybe it's for the best. To achieve Carol's spooky modern look, we're going to darken the wood, but still keep the overall look of the table true to its original design. We're going to update the desk hardware with some classic brass knobs, and we're going to extend the desktop with a new desk extension, giving the desk more usable table space. Carol, welcome to the workshop. Let's lay it down on its side so we can start working on it. First piece we're gonna remove is the back piece since that's holding everything together. Because we wanna not damage the desk too much, we're gonna use a soft mallet and some chisels, which will help us go under the uh, nails and safely remove all the parts. While we were taking apart the desk, we found some interesting things hidden between the roll top and the backboard of the desk. What is that? It, it's like a kid's drawing or something and it says Fred. We have a really old army guy. He's in his like officer uniform right now. So this is a, uh, okay. an officer army guy. Oh, it's very old. Uh, it's gonna like fall apart. Uh, Hold on, there's writing on it. It's from Dubuque? like the Dubuque Fire and Marine Insurance Company. It's like from uh, Charles City, Iowa. Dear Mr. Lapburn, Miss Wood, and Mr. Porries are in a fight and will not. And the note just ends there. Ray, we shouldn't have opened up this desk. It, We've made it, a mistake. We've made a mistake. Look at this. this is a... That's like creepy kid cursive. The letterhead says that the company was organized in 1883. So we don't know if the desk was from 1883, but this piece of paper, this company at least, was from 1883. These must be connected. Who oh is God. Fred? Don't rip it. Really, it's going to not... haunt us. Um, Fred, if you're out there, if this was your desk, come find us. Fred's probably dead, though, at this point, huh? So before uh, the spirits decide to uh, haunt us and uh, get mad that we're giving this desk a new spooky modern look, we're gonna put these notes aside. Okay. And yes. we're gonna hope that uh, Fred doesn't right. haunt us. Take these away. Okay, we're, uh, okay. We're, just, we're just gonna go. We're gonna continue. We're not cursed at all. There we go, there we go. Oh gosh. 
good, Carol. You got this. Okay, okay. Cool. Great. To give the furniture a nice new stain, we're gonna sand everything down. So we're going to start off by using some orbital sanders. Okay. Cheryl, this is for you. Thank you. All you really have to do is turn the on button. Don't turn it on yet. And then you're gonna turn it on, push it down onto the wood, and then just sand with the wood. Okay. This is why we have mask on. So when you're saying you kind of want to go a little aggressive, not super aggressive where you're pushing in, but don't be afraid to uh, go a little hard on the wood. Okay. Because it's uh, you don't want to be here all day. Because uh, the fun thing is we get to do this twice. No. Because right now we're using a 80 grit, which is just coarse enough so that we can remove the top layer, and then after that we use a finer grit so that we can smooth it out. All right. So uh, we're done sanding. First time using a uh, power sander and doing this much sanding. Carol, how do you feel? It's not for me. I don't think sanding is for anybody. <laughs> Moving on to the next step of this multi-stain process, we are going to create a tannin solution. If you don't have a tannin solution, you could just heat up 10 tea bags, reduce it, and paint your furniture with it. What? To make our tannin solution, we're gonna get some water, and we're just gonna grab some spoonfuls of the powder, mm. put it in. It looks like hot cocoa. Probably doesn't taste like hot cocoa. We're gonna mix it up. And now, that's our tannin solution. Tannins can naturally be found in plants, seeds, wood, and leaves. When added to the second part of our stain, it will darken. Use a brush to apply a nice even layer of your tannin solution to all your furniture. Make sure you're wearing gloves during this process to protect your hands from being stained. Now that we've finished our tannin stain, we're going to create our oxidizing solution, which all you need is a glass jar a whole bunch of really fine Ooh, steel wool. Let's touch that. What you want to do is you want to like spread it apart. Okay, okay. And then go ahead and put it inside that jar. Okay. Just stuff it in there. Yeah. We're going to add some vinegar. What this does is that the vinegar is going to break down the steel wool and it's actually going to start to bubble and become a dark oxidizing solution. How long does that take? So, rule of thumb is the longer you keep it in there, the stronger the solution is gonna be. So we let this sit for about a week, and since we don't have a week, this is what it's gonna look like. As you can tell, it's darker, and it's eaten about 90% of the steel wool. A little creepy looking, but this is gonna give it a really cool look. The way that this works is the tannins that we put inside of the wood is going to react to the vinegar seal wool solution and it's going to oxidize and turn into a really dark color. The cool thing about this is that it's almost instant that we take our solution and then it darkens it super fast. The tannins are reacting to the oxidizing layer and it's turning it into a darker wood. Awesome. This is my favorite way to darken wood and a quick way to give it that nice aged barnyard look. The vinegar smell will clear up as the wood dries up. Make sure your wood is completely dry before applying the finish. Now that all of our pieces are dry, we're going to apply a Danish oil so that it could give our wood a nice finished look.
is really great forearm work. If you've ever wondered about your forearms, Carol, this is a, a great way to build them up. I think about it all the time. So waiting for the desk pieces to dry up and for the Danish oil to harden, we're gonna work on the desktop. And what we have in front of us, Carol, is the old desktop, which as you can tell is kind of like old and rickety. We're gonna replace this guy with this guy. And what we have here is a new desktop that I put together, which features uh, a new pullout so that Carol can have more writing space and overall just desk space for her desktop. The reason it's put together is because what we're doing is we're making it a dry fit to make sure that all of our pieces are fit and snug before everything is uh, put together. Using a cordless nail gun, we attach the base of the new desktop to the legs of the desk, ensuring it's in the same position as the previous base. So we have these rails, which will help extend the extended desktop, and we're gonna attach it onto this guy before we attach it onto the tabletop. Pro tip, use a quick square tool to help align the rails to the edge of the desk before securing them in place. Once attached, secure the other side of the rail to the base of the desk. Use a quick square tool to align the rail. So now that the desk extension has been installed, we're gonna glue up the rest of the pieces so that this top can be hidden. When gluing things in place, it can get a little messy. Use a silicone glue tray and a glue brush to help control glue placement. To ensure your pieces stay in place as it dries, reattach the band clamps to hold everything in place. Now, all we have to do is assemble all of the other pieces back together. Cool. Let's do this. The last little bit we have to do is seal the back with a new piece of wood, but we're gonna do something a little creepy. We're gonna take this photo and this little note. We're gonna hide it in the back so that the next owner will feel as creeped out as we were by Fred. Let's, let's, do, it. let's do this. Ta-da! Ta-da! We're gonna right. attach it over here. Okay. And lift, 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 lift. Oh, she's a heavy. Modern spooky desk is done. Carol, we did it. Yes. Let's take us back to your apartment. It's so nice. Let's go. Let's go. We darkened the wood to give the desk a modern vibe, we were able to double the amount of desk space, and for fun, we hit a spooky note for someone to find in the future. The desk now has a new home in Carol's apartment. It looks good enough to show off now. I learned that building is a lot harder than I thought it was. I learned that my desk is possibly a little haunted. Taking something apart is already on its own, like a whole thing. And then all like the steps you need to take to make sure it like stays preserved well into the future. It's a whole ordeal, and I don't know how you do it all the time, Ray. Oh, you know, I, uh, I try. So this is what we did to Carol's desk to give it that creepy modern look. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys would have done differently. Princess Potato apparently also appreciates- She approves. The, uh, the new desk area. She loves it.